Hello everyone, and welcome back to Digital Academy, the complete Python development tutorial for beginners. In the previous tutorial, you may have discovered in-depth use about tuples in Python. This kind of data types is used when you want to pack values and access them in a very efficient way using the unpacking method, but also prevent its modification. In this brand new video, you will now discover another data type, sets. Be sure to stick around and watch until the end of this video if you want to discover various actions and methods that you can perform on sets in Python. Please do not forget to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm since it does really help supporting us and providing new free content once a week. You may also want to follow Digital Academy on our other social platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Patreon. This way, we could stay in touch, grow this community, then share and help each other throughout this exciting journey, our journey. Are you interested to be part of this community? All the links are in the description below. Now, let's play this video. Definition. Python offers a range of compound data types, often referred to as sequences. Set is one of the most frequently used data types in Python, amongst list, dictionary and tuple. In fact, Set in Python is a collection of items, and its important properties are as follows. Unordered. Items stored in a set are not kept in any particular order. Not indexed. You cannot access set items by referring to an index. Contains only unique elements. Set items are unique, and duplicate items are not allowed. Is of mutable type. Sets can be changed, grow, and shrink once it has been created, on demand. Moreover, sets in Python are commonly used for computing mathematical operations such as union, intersection, difference, and symmetric difference operations. Great. Now that you have understood what a set is, let's move forward and discover how to create a set in Python. But also, what are all of the operations that you can perform on it in order to add, remove, or access an item, even search for a specific item inside of this set? So be sure to stick around and watch this entire video. Creating a set. There are several ways to create a new set. In Python programming language, the simplest way to create a set is to enclose all of the items, also known as elements, inside curly braces and separated by commas. It can have any number of items inside and they can even be of different data types, integer, float, string, boolean, or even another object, which contains other items of different data types, and so forth. Although a set itself is mutable, it cannot contain mutable objects. Therefore, only immutable objects like numbers, strings and tuples can be a set item. But lists and dictionaries are mutable, so they cannot be a set item. Now, let's have a closer look at its syntax, so you can declare your own set and start practicing. Here is an example, in which you want to store a list of strings. First, let's declare an empty set, with empty curly braces. Eventually, you will add all of the strings, so that you can store and then access these values, later on. My set equals, red, green, and, blue, surrounded by curly braces. But, remember, sets do not allow duplicate members, they are automatically removed, during its creation. Consequently, my set which has been declared with the values, red, green, blue, and red again, will only contain these items once, green, blue, and red. As you have seen, a set containing zero items is called an empty set, and you can create one with empty curly braces. But, you can also create a new set in Python using its type constructor, called set. Or, even convert other data types into a set like string, tuples, or any object of immutable type. This way, you can convert the string, A, B, C, into a new set, containing the items, A, B, and C, but also convert a list or a tuple, which contains the items 1, 2, and 3, into another set. One thing to keep on mind is that this conversion would remove any duplicate members, automatically. That's great, but once you have created your set, you may also want to add other items, or even update some values inside, right? Then, let's see how it all works, in the next section. Adding and updating items to a set. Adding or updating sets items is very easy. Sets are mutable, which means their elements can be changed. In fact, 
you can add one single item into a set, using the method add. This method adds an item, but not at the very end of the set, since sets are not indexed, remember. Consequently, you can create a set with the items, red, green, and blue. Then add the item, yellow, to this set, using the method add, and your item as parameter. You can also add multiple items at once, using the method update. This way, all items inside your iterable object, whether it is a list or a tuple, will be added into your set, if the item does not already exist inside, of course. Consequently, the items yellow and orange will be added to my set, but not necessarily kept in this specific order. Nonetheless, since a set is not indexed, you cannot update any value, once it has been added inside. Consequently, your only way to update an item in a set would be to remove this value, and only then add another one. If you want to know how to remove an item from a set in Python, please follow along this video, and its next sections. Accessing an item. Of course, sets elements must be accessible, somehow. Unfortunately, sets are not indexed, and unordered. If you do not get its values by keys nor indexes, like you would with a dictionary or list in Python, then how would you get them? Well, the only way to access an item of a set in Python, is to iterate through every single item, using for and while loops. Eventually, you may also want to get a random item, using the method pop. Let's move forward to the next sections, and discover how it works. Removing items from a set. There are several ways to remove items from a set, either by its value, or a random item within your set, and even remove all of them, at once. Removing an item by index. If you do not know the value of the item you want, you can use the pop method to remove an item, located at a random position. It will modify the set, and returns the removed item. For instance, let's first declare a set with the colors red, green and blue. Then, call the function pop to remove a random value, and store its value inside my item. As you see, the method pop will modify my set, and returns the removed item, blue. Nonetheless, you did not choose which value to remove, from my set. Fortunately for you, Python provides this ability. Removing an item by value. If you are not sure where the item is in the set, and that you want to remove a specific and single value but do not need to store it, you can use the methods remove or discard to delete this item by its value. But, keep in mind that, if more than one instance of the given item is present, this method removes only the first instance found. Both methods work exactly the same way. The only difference is that, if the specified item is not present in a set, the method remove raises a key error exception, whereas the method discard does nothing but remove this value, if found. Removing all items. Eventually, you may also want to remove all items from a set, at once. You can use the method clear, to permanently and fully remove all items from the set, at once. Then the specific keyword del, to delete the set itself, entirely. And you're done, there is nothing left. Checking the existence of an item. To determine whether a value is or is not in a set, you can use, in, and, not in, operators in Python, combined with the conditional if statement. For instance, let's check whether red is part of my set, using the expression, if red in my set. This will return a boolean value that evaluates only if the given condition is true, then enter the conditional body statements. If you need help using these kind of statements, please check out the suggested videos, on operators, and conditionals in Python. Iterating through a set. Sets are a very useful and a widely used data structure, in Python. As a developer, you will often be in situations where you will need to iterate through a set, while you perform some actions with its items. Therefore, the most common way to iterate through a set is using for loop iterations. This works well if you only need to read the items of the set. But, if you want to know at which position an item is, you will need its indexes. A common way to do that is to convert your set into a list then combine the functions range and len all together, or use the enumerate function. If you do not know how the enumerate function works, please check out a suggested video about Python for loops. Eventually, you may want to find how many items a set has. In that case, you do not have to iterate through the entire set and count each item, 
but use the function len, which returns the number of items in a set. Awesome. You know how to create a set, add values and iterate through its items. But you might be still wondering, what are sets used for? Let's find out and go through the last section of this class, joining two sets. Sets are commonly used for computing mathematical operations, such as intersection, union, difference, and symmetric difference. Consequently, there are several ways to join two or more sets in Python. Set union. Union of the sets A and B is the set of all items in either A or B. Therefore, you can use the method union or the operator pipe that returns a new set containing all the items from two or more sets. Or the method update that inserts all the items from one set into another set. For instance, let's declare a first set, A, with the items red, green and blue. Then the second set, B, with the items yellow, red and orange. Either if you are more comfortable using the method union or the operator pipe, both resulting sets will contain all items from both sets combined. But there are other methods that joins two sets and keeps only the duplicates or, on the opposite, never keeps the duplicate items. Set intersection. Intersection of the sets A and B is the set of items common to both A and B. You can perform intersection on two or more sets using the method intersection, or an operator. Consequently, the intersection of both sets will result in a new set, containing only the item red, which is the unique item common to both A and B. Set difference. Set difference of A and B is the set of all items that are in A, but not in B. You can compute the difference between two or more sets using the method difference or minus operator. Consequently, the difference of both sets will result in a new set, containing the items blue and green, because these items are present in the first set A, but not in the second set, B. Set symmetric difference. Symmetric difference of sets A and B is the set of all elements, in either A or B, but not both. You can compute symmetric difference between two or more sets using the method symmetric underscore difference, or XOR operator. Consequently, the symmetric difference of these two sets will give you a new set with all elements from both set, that are not in the other set. This will result with items orange, blue, green and yellow, since red is part of both sets. Built-in functions, with set. Python has a set of other built-in functions and methods, that you can call on sets objects. Some of them have been used throughout this video, so you can add or insert new values, even get or remove a specific value. But, you may sometimes want to sort a set, count how many times an item is present inside your set, gets its min or max values, or even determine whether a set is a subset of another set. Of course, all of that is possible in a very simple way, using these built-in methods. If you are interested to learn more about these methods, you can find more information on the Python website and its documentation. Please, also check out our blog if you want more examples on digital.academy.free.fr. In this tutorial, you have learned in-depth use about sets, in Python. This kind of data types is used, when you want to compute mathematical operations, or do not store any duplicate members. Consequently, you should now be able to, create a set, add or remove a few items, or even search for a specific item. Thus, sets should not be a secret anymore, and you can start using them in your Python program, straight away. In the next tutorial, you will finally discover functions, so that you can arrange and reuse your code, in Python. So, do not waste any minute of it, and join us in the next episode. If you liked this video, please, do not forget to give a thumb up, and subscribe our channel. Digital Academy, learn free. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Like, comment, and share.